TRS holding the gamer. Hey, 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 hey. Famous, y'all nigga already famous. Fuck what you heard, y'all nigga already famous. Fuck what you heard, y'all nigga already famous. It's Reese D got my name, but she wanna fuck me because I didn't care. Oh, we are back. Dream Entertainment. Today we got Reek Sadiq sitting down with us, man. One of Philly finest up and coming, great voices. You know what I'm saying? Good music, great vibes, putting it together like he always, you know, he bringing it. And the youth actually, we found out today, man, they really listening to you out here, man. Okay, bro. Right. I appreciate you for being on our platform. Appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Man, yeah, let's get into it, man. You know, tell everyone, you know, pretty much how long you've been pursuing your career, you know, start from the youngest age you can think of. Well, i just been pursuing my career since I was, like, maybe 16 as far as writing my own music and all that. But as far as singing, I've been singing since I was, like, five at daycare. Just like that. Daycare? Who you were singing to? Like, you had a little daycare girlfriend you was singing to, <laughs> or... I ain't gonna well, what's going I, on? I, I I had little I had little you mean <laughs> friends and they heard, like, they heard they heard my voice and like, they didn't know what they, we didn't know it was singing for real because we was kids but they always knew I had like a high pitched voice right so it was like I was like favorite when it when like when it come to me like expressing my voice okay I always was favorite but I always talk about like. Cooking, I like to cook. You mean I'm, I'm a certified chef, so I cook. When I sing, I sing about cooking all types of shit. I'm stressing. I sing about stressing. So I get on my nerves. Please get the hell out my face. I, I might really do that. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So right. I just put. I really sing. Like I like right. to sing. That's me. So you you say that you started writing at 16. What what made you realize like you know what I need to start writing. I need to really start uh, embracing the skill set you know that I have with my voice. Um, what made me feel like that at 16, it was like, it was a summer day where I saw, I saw one of my favorite, like, you mean, artists that was coming up at the time in Philly, they was doing anything, and they was, they was pushing, it was like 21, and I, that's when I was like 16, was again, so I just turned 16 right around that time. But long story short, I'm like, damn, I got the voice. I've been singing since I was five. I know I got the voice now. I'm 16. I've been in there for a minute. School, they all around me. Like, you mean they fucking with me? They, they, call, they tell me I'm a singer. So I'm like, fuck it. Now I know about the artistry. So when I was like 16, so I'm like, damn, let me like, let me find out about the artistry of the, uh, of the whole music thing. You feel what I'm saying? Like, how to sit down and write your first song, how you how you express yourself. So I'm sitting down in the living room, my aunt created a computer, just got done doing homeschool because I was homeschooled at the time, um, putting on beats. I just came up with a little song. I came up with it, went to the studio, paid my first fifty dollars. My mom went with me, my mom and Jenny me, she went down there with me. You mean four 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 shout out to Dunny. We went down there and uh, recorded at Heavy Music Studios. He recorded that joint. It sounded crazy. When I put it out, it went crazy. I got five hundred thousand plays in a week on SoundCloud and the comments and the, and the love and the repost was different. I don't even remember the numbers, but it was different at that time. So I'm like, damn, in a week. I see how I was going up on the brain, like, let me keep writing. So I just started, kept writing. Like, the next day, I was up writing. Like, it started, like, it made me feel like when you shoot your first your, your first couple threes in your game, the ball, you like, damn, I got to get in the next game. I'm waiting for that next game. Let me go get ready. Like, I was on that. Like, damn, I just ran it up that, for, that first little week. Let me go back to the table real quick. Bryce, I know I'm writing, like, two songs now at a time. Like, I, I'm eager for it. So now I'm writing, like, songs in 15 minutes. It's getting down to 30 minutes when I'm writing three songs. My old head paying me, at the, sitting at the table paying me, like, I give you $20 for each song, you're doing 30 minutes. I'm knocking out like four or five songs, he paying me out cash money. Like, it's getting to a point where I'm just like, you mean I'm writing? And I just start going in with it. Like, let day, me, I let me ask you this. The, the person that was paying you out, like, what was they doing with your songs? Or they just was, that was they, motivation they, he, too for you to write the songs? He, he, he wound up becoming my, he wound up becoming my first manager. Like, my first kind of, like, you mean, my first manager. Like, you mean, taking me out of the state. You mean, like, with my mom and shit like that. Or with my, my uncle and my cousin right. and shit like that, taking me out of the but state. But I, I mean, shit. now that you look back on it, at 16, dropping your first song or whatever. Because you got artists that's, like, today, they can't even get 500,000 streams 
in a year. Like no promotion. That's what I'm saying. Like they can't. They got promotion. Like, thousand people on Instagram. Five hundred thousand please. That came from like that's the heart. And then the next. Then when I drop my. But but hear what I'm saying though. You got people in the industry right now, industry mm -hmm. people and local people that's not even getting those numbers within a year right. span of time. So, you know, like, did that also boost your eager to, you know, your ego to know, like, damn, I can do it because I got 500K in a yeah, week? Yeah. It boosts my ego because I kind of, like, once I kept going, I kind of fell off and then I still had my, my, my naturalist and my, my other talent. Were, were you Reek Sadiq then? Yeah. That they know now. Yeah. You always been Reek Sadiq. You didn't have more than one rap name or. I'm on my off season right now. I say, but back then when I was just all out there with it, when I just found out about it, and I just kept going, dropping, doing stuff like just uh, uh, uh I gotta do this, do that, cause I didn't really know nothing about it. I was trying to do everything. I felt like it all came to part, like it was playing the part. But when I slowed down and start trying to get up to the next level, it kind of closed a little door on me because. A lot of shit came around. I started getting a little big headed on like some like business shit and all this. And the so it kind of took away from me learning about worrying about my artistry type, my time, right. real, real. So that's what I'm on right now. We we'll dropped my first album. We get for that, but it broke. It kind of broke me down. But I'm still, you know, I'm still going. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still me. So what? When did you wake up? So we we see that you had a manager. You know, previously, and you say you was going state to state. You know, you was already getting good plays, basically good feedback from your peers and the people around you. So, in the state that you at right now, because I see you, you got plenty of vi uh, visuals. You got good songs, you know, and I just feel like you know, performance wise, I looked at the performances. You got the performance aspect down pack, you know. So it seemed like you you packaged up and you kind of ready to move to another level. You know, so where are we standing at as 2021? What, what, what can we expect from Reek Sadiq? Hard right, work in and out of the state. My, my face being where it's most important at for my fans. You mean going harder? You mean what, what, what just giving? Like, you mean giving? No matter if it's giving back, giving music, like just putting out more because I've been holding a lot and I got a lot of good stuff, but an album, you can expect my first independent album with my manager, my auntie, Bray, me and you dropping the first album, hopefully by the beginning of the summer, so you for that, once again, independent, becoming like, you feel what I'm saying, from the, from the muscle, my first album, R&B, hip-hop, folk, whatever you want to call it, is an A and B side, 10 and 10, we go hard, shit like that. So that. So, <clears throat> with that being stated, you know, uh, what's the name of the project? Um, well, when I first, when I first, uh, got my thought about having an album, I called it The Road Struggle, which stand for TRS, my, um, like, my little slogan I'm going with, but um, I'm kind of, like, thinking about constructing it, changing it to a different name, you know, because I'm having more songs on there and different types of songs, and it's making, like, more and better sense for me to express it better. So, maybe, it, it may be The Road Struggle Volume 1, might not be, just stay tuned. So you a little, little undecided right now. You know what you should do? You should, you should, you should put, you should probably do like a little, a, a little thing for the fans, where as though you know you got two titles and whichever one they pick, you know, uh, whoever, whichever one got the most picks from your fans, you know, you probably run with that title since you do have two solid titles. You know. So, so uh, <clears throat> going on now, you know, you we in here with Bream, like you know, Bream, you know, Bream Entertainment. So let's talk about how this came about for you and how that's working out. It just came about because I mean, a law put her in my speech for the right reason. It's, it's really not too much to to say. A law put her in my speech for the right reason. I've been you mean messed over. Plenty of times in my career, just me being independent once again, and a young boy. My mom, that's my aunt before the music. It's been like my aunt, you mean we blood, we family. I love her to death. She loved me. So, me personally, I just wanted to carry for myself a quick scenario. It's my aunt, I'm going to sign to her. Like, you feel me? She's going to be my manager. She going to do what's right for me. I'm going to do what's right for her. And that's just it. She right. Came, she so, married, and we gonna work. how did this relationship yeah. work out a little bit better? You know, bef you know, basically, you know, since you've been in the business, you know, you're older now, you've been going through, how does this relationship differs from the other relationships you had with people that 
probably may have played some type of management role in your lifestyle? Um, it differs like from other ones that I did come across because, like I said, it's family. They were my family. They became family. It's a difference when you become family. Family, like right. you already was known for family. Like, the tr the trust is there. Yeah, yeah, it's a different, especially when you're young. Like you know what I'm saying. And it's the background of my family. My mom, that's my mom, girlfriend, my right. right. Friend, so I ain't pushing nothing about it. Right. right. So bring me back. We always back, you already know, man. Me and you like Bootsy and Vlad, you know, like, right, you know, so for real, you know, we like Bootsy and Vlad in this general, you know. So we, we back for like the third time right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, man, you just, you don't surprise me. Like, it's just like you got this secret bag of artists that we don't know about, and you just pull them out one by one, slowly but surely, you know. And you know, once again, female dominating this 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 man's world. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know you all. I mean, we could tell if people follow you social media wise and stuff like that. We could tell how much you care about your artists and well, the things that you do for your artists. But for me personally, I see how you talk about him. So, yeah. you know, um, outside of it being you know nephew, you know. You know, family and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It just seemed like it for you. You, it, it got this feeling online when I see you post about them. You really feel mm -hmm. like this is it. Like, what, where, where does that come from? Like, um, it's crazy, right? Because Rick performed for me by like 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. something like that. I had like a, I was on like an activist event for the youth or whatever. And he was one of the ones that performed, right? Time went on. And at the time went on, <clears throat> I ran into it again because his mom, she basically called me, she's like, Rick, ready, this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get with enough. I'm going to get with enough. Right. And then um, I, went to t I took my time because I'd be so busy. So I took my time. I was like, let me listen to him. So I put on, I like to listen to music in the car because I get the more effect of it opposed to listening on my phone. So I went to listen to the car. I was like, oh. This nasty. Like, this, <laughs> this real nasty. Like, what's this? Like, what? So I said, no, I need to hear something else. That's just how you move real quick. I went to play another song. I'm like, oh, that's another nasty. I said, what are you doing over here? So, you know, I had came to him. I gave him the real album. I gave it to his mom. The real album. And I like to just, like I told you before, I just like to be forward, straight forward with everybody because. I don't like to be lied to, so I don't like to lie to nobody. And I get to do business and keep it pushing. And one thing about me, I bet I may not be the top celebrity manager or mm -hmm. top notch of you know 2021, but I know my name is definitely out there. Um, and I know as a manager, who I am as a person affects what I am when a business do. So your personality travels to your career side of things as well. So with that being said. You can never switch up. So I just take that and put my heart into that. Put my heart into them. Make sure that they go hard. So when I got with Rick, I'm like, all right, let's sign this. You ready? And he's like, all right. And I said, listen, we need to go hard all summer. Okay. I said, we ended up to win it. Like, that's it. And then when I be hearing Rick's songs, I could be just waking up. And I'm like, there's something about this boy. I don't he, know what it do is about that, this boy. He got that vibe. Boy. Like his, he got that vibe. His whole vibe, everything. His mannerism, his vibe, everything. I like, I was like, this is the one. Like, I don't love all my artists to death. Y'all know I love y'all. But some of y'all, I be like, this is it. Like, top. Ty, shout out to Ty. That's my man. Like, Ty definitely me. came a long way. Because when Ty first started, no, nah, bro. Mm -hmm. That's how he hard, he's a hard worker, he dedicates himself, and now he got the sound. You gonna wait for that? You say, I'll be busting out with shit. You about to say that shit too? <laughs> he, about to, he about to drop some shit to make you like candles. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's, um, it's one of them type situations. But yeah, yeah but Reek was just like, it's a gift with this boy. I don't know what it is, but man, but you know, I say, boy, I don't want nobody to take it like that. But like, you know, it's just like, damn, like, I just wake up sometimes, I'm like, this is it. I, I make sure I, I shout all my artists out. I make sure I put all my artists out there. I may not go hard on the other ones like I do on the other ones because I have a goal like to balance things out. So most of the time, 
they'll be working on something and this one already has something in program. So you gotta balance the stuff because you gotta make sure that I'm the type of person if I'm winning, we all win it. So if Reek won, we all win it. That's how that's gonna go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or well, vice versa, whoever else. But um that's how I look at it. But this boy right here, like I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all better stop sleeping on. Get your interviews while you can. Get everything while you can, because I promise you, for the people that act like bougie on them or act like they ain't wanna help us or whatever. I'm going to still show love because this is a little game. Like, it is what it is. So, yeah, this is the one. This is Rick Sadiq. Stay tuned for that one. So, you know, it's just, you know, um, it just seemed like Bream is really, um, to be honest with you, you know, we're just going to keep it to being. It seems like Bream Entertainment is starting to now birth the new sound of Philly. You know, um, because the reason why I say that, because if you look at all the new people that came out last year, and, you know, there's only, if I could count on my hands, it's only about five main institutions for the up-and-coming Philly hip-hop scene. And, um, you know, to not have an infrastructure, you know, some of the main artists that came out of last year and this year came from... Bream Entertainment. So, you know, a lot of people are starting to harness those sounds as well, too, you know, and whether they with you or not with you, they coming from Bream. So, you know, how how does that feel to know that, you know, some of the sound, you know. I'm humble. I'm humble. I, you know, it's a blessing. Like, you know, I worship Allah, you know, so I believe in anything Allah is decreed for me, it's decreed for me. So what's not for me, it's not for me. So at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm humble and I'm grateful at the same time. But I, I believe when you humble and stay grounded, you know, you you blessed with it, but you, you don't want to go too big here because you can go left that fast. So um, anything I do is from the heart. So trust and believe it's like a boomerang. It'll come right back to me. So I'm not right. worried about, like, the interference or anybody that's in competition with me because I'm not in competition with nobody but me and my artists. Like, you know what I mean? Ourselves. Because... It's no point to compete when nobody ain't got your shit together. Well, we do, we, we, we do see um, the talent that you take time to invest into when they first get to you. And, you know, like, we'll, we'll look back three months later and be like, God damn, you know, what, what's going on that we don't know about? <laughs> you know, like, you know, um, your, your, your regiment that you have going on over there, you can see that obviously, you know, um, it's working. You know, um, on on camera and off camera, in entertainment and off entertainment, I, I, I can say that I see what you're trying to put together. And for the artist that is following the regiment, you can see the difference, you know. Um, because I, I've seen two artists, per se. You know, I, I've, I've seen when it came to you, when, when you put your hands on them. You can see by the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they was moving. And then you look five months down the line, it's like, wow, they really superstars. You know, it was almost an overnight situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you, what do you think it is about your regiment that really gets your artists to realize, I need to walk like this, talk like this, I need to dress like this, you know? Are you the person who really, like, get them to wake up or it's just like how, what happens? I just I'm a woman first <laughs> then I'm a mom and not saying that I'm trying to son them with the mom but females always have the finesse like we always got the finesse touch on men so like at the end of the day I see the foresight I see the long jeopardy I don't see what to make a man doing. stop sagging and really <laughs> pull his pants up and <laughs> tighten his belt like yeah. it really takes a lot and like I I don't know, maybe you do have those headlock moments and I need to oh, yeah, they, give them noogies they, 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 and all that they, they stuff. Can you know. can speak, he can speak for me, but I just keep it real with him. Like, I don't mm. sugarcoat anything with them. Like, if I say, that ain't it, that ain't it. Like, you know what I mean? Whether it's their music, whatever it is. I'm like, I'm not putting it out. I'm not putting that on my page. Mm. I don't play certain shit. Like, I don't like guns. There's no need for you to have guns on your page. Mm. We're marketing. We're not doing shit for the local. If you want to be local, you don't need to be on my team. But if you want to go far, 
then you need to do what I tell you to do because it's going to take you a long way. If you think this is for everybody that's in the game when it's rising to the top, if you think things are going to happen overnight, it's not. But if you really want this, it'll happen. You just got to be strong-minded and you got to go hard for what you want. This is your career. This is not a nine-to-five job. This is your career. It's a difference. Let me ask you this, though, Reed. You know, um, and we, we still sticking with management. Um, because, I, you know, one thing about me, artists always get their flowers. And some don't. But the people who's behind them never get their flowers. We never get to dig into those brains and stuff like that. So I just want to ask you from an artist's perspective, dealing with, you know, brain entertainment, right? And we just were talking about, you know, how a lot of us can see how how artists come in and then, you know, you can just see the grownness through music and, you know, personal life, you know, how people grow. So let me ask you this. What, what do you think for yourself, you know? Even though it's auntie and everything, you know, what do you think for yourself? Because I'm pretty sure you're cool with some of the other artists, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think that it is that she does to make y'all feel comfortable to say, you know what, let me try that? Because, you know, being an artist, sometimes a manager is going to give you a new way to look at things. Right. So what do you think it is that she does to ease y'all to make y'all try something new? Honestly, I don't want it like... When it comes to, the, I'm gonna bring it in two for us, cause that's how I gotta be real honest. Cause I'm a season, but you you might move different, cause you might be used to something else. So the way that she move, the way that she, what she um, allow us to see how she move and what she and how she uh, overcome stuff, I would say right and be able to um, take on stuff and challenge. You, you feel what I'm saying? Me in my head. I would be like, all right, I see that. We, you will try to do this and then the third, so that you can be up to date with your manager. You will be the man that you need to be by the time we are both bang bang at the table. You won't be like this. You feel what I'm saying? Because then that make it make me feel weak. So I try to keep up. It's just something like she said, compete with each other as a competition. So she, so you, ba she basically showing you right how to how to hold yourself up, but but not tell you what to do. You see what I'm saying? Doing what she got to do for us, we should be able to do what we got to do for ourselves. That's what I'm trying to so, say. So that's the ultimatum right there. So as long as you hold your end of the bargain up, right. you, you fix these things, right. you know, like it's it's, it's it's not no babysitting. You right. know, yeah, you, got right. yeah. you got this to do. You got this to do. Swag one and podcast. Y'all know how we carrying it. Rebranding hip hop culture.